Hi, my name is JJ. Uh, and I'm Eric. And we're back with another week of our Fantasy Football Vidcast. This week joining us, we have our special guest, Peter Bailey-Wells. He's our Fantasy Football columnist for our paper. Thank you for joining us, Peter. You bet. Thanks. Um, well, we'll just get right down to it because we all know everyone's ready to go watch some more football and set their fantasy lineups. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and start, as we usually do, with our hots, our knots, our waiver wires before we get down to the matchup. But this week we're going to start with our waiver wire pickups. What do you think, Eric? Yeah, so my waiver wire pickup for the week is Donald Brown running back for San Diego. Uh, if you're not aware, Ryan Matthews, the starter, is out with an injury. He's out, I think, four to six-ish weeks. So Brown will absorb the bulk of the carries, um, should get the bulk of the carries. And uh, in that offense with Phillip Rivers, you know, he's one of the elite quarterbacks in the league, I think, in my opinion. So he can spread the ball. And um, you guys aren't agreeing with that, I don't think. <laughs> I, don't I don't know about elite, but he's above average. I, I would say he's about, you, you can argue top five. Anyway, anyway, that's besides the point. So Donald Brown, Donald Brown um, just be aware, though, that Danny Woodhead is also on that team, and he may vulture some carries and touchdowns. But Brown should get the majority. On my end of the waiver wire, though, I'm kind of praying for that vulturing. I've got Kyrie Robinson for New England, or New Orleans, I'm sorry. Oh, that's a, um, that's a deep one. Yeah, yeah he, um, he's good on the goal line, and they've been using him. They've proved to use him, I believe, last week. He had double-digit points, which is way better than half of my running backs are doing, especially with them all going down with injuries nowadays. Um, so Kyrie Robinson, maybe not play him, but definitely put him on your roster just in case. What about you, Peter? Yeah, he might take about Robinson. He might take those Darren Sproles catches that obviously Sproles uh, doesn't have because he's now playing with Philadelphia. Uh, my my waiver wire pick is probably Kirk Cousins of the Redskins. That may be sort of obvious because he's very clearly going to be the starter with RG3 out. But I mean, he put up more points without offense last week than Redskins have put up all but once with RG3 as their starter. So I think it's a pretty compelling argument to be said that He'll put up some points. I think there's a lot of stock in that, too, because even with the timetable on uh, Griffin looking pretty good, I think that they're going to continue to stay with him as long yeah. as he continues yeah. to win them games. Yeah. Because RG3, bottom line, not winning them games. Yeah, Not winning games, he's <laughs> always he injured. Hurt. He gets always hurt. injured. Yeah. Plays too reckless. So, he, so he's a definite knot, like a lot of players are this week. <laughs> yeah. A lot of players down with injuries. But for knots, we'll stay focused on players that are actually going to be in the game. And for me, I'm going to go with Torrey Smith, because week in and week out, I'm hoping Torrey Smith gets stuff. But yeah. with... Smith Sr. now on the team. He is taking yeah. everything. Uh, Steve Smith now on the team is basically catching everything Flacco throws to him. Yeah. Torrey Smith, I think, has had inside five catches in the last couple weeks, and that is not good to have on your roster. It doesn't matter if it's for 10 yards, 20 yards. I mean, he hasn't gotten any touchdowns, uh -huh. and it doesn't look like, save a miracle, he's going to get me much more. Yeah, well, and he's someone who relies on big plays. And he hasn't had any of those yet. Nope. So. And Steve Smith's there. What take the spotlight. So yeah. we got Steve Smith there, giving Flacco another option, a veteran like that. He's probably going to go with him. Yeah. Uh, my cold player, not player for the week, would be Jason Witten, tight end for the Cowboys. Um, in the standard ESPN league, he's only he only has five points in two weeks, which is just on Jason Witten like. Yeah, that's abysmal. And it's 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 like you just he's one of those guys you know he's going to pick it up. But it's probably not going to be this week because he's going against St. Louis. And based on last year, they allowed like one of the few. They allowed the fewest points to tight ends, or one of the fewest. So it's just a tough matchup for him. St. Louis has that just amazing defensive line, linebacker, linebacking core. So it's just not a good week for Witt. Yeah, yeah. Which is surprising because Romo has been throwing the ball I, all over the place. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, my not for the week has got to be Eli Manning. <laughs> uh, not for the year. Well, yeah, he's he's. Not had even extending back to last season, he's not had a good job, you know, throwing the ball around. So, yeah, led the NFL in interceptions. I don't think you have to say much more than that. <laughs> no, fair enough. Fair he, enough. He, um, it's hard to call it a slump when it's been as long as it is. Yeah. I mean, you go from yeah. being a Super Bowl winning quarterback to being what I saw last year, Bears Giants, like in the first quarter, they had two interceptions, one for a touchdown. I mean, that doesn't seem to really be improving. So, yeah, yeah. I. I don't see any. I don't see many people keeping him around for very much longer. Maybe a third stringer or something if he absolutely yeah, need he one. Yeah, could be your backup, but not uh, reliable. <clears throat> uh, no. Opposite though, while Eli Manning's getting a little older, he's been there for a while, and he's starting to slump. Andrew Luck, I mean, he's just continuing to go up. And this week he plays Jacksonville. Both two weeks, I mean, he lost his first two weeks, and he put, yeah. lost the Denver. I mean, mm -hmm. they haven't done all that well at, at actually beating. Their, I mean, they're not winning games, but. 
Andrew Luck is a fantasy player, has a lot of stock, and this week he's against Jacksonville. They need a win to avoid starting off 0-3. I mean, I would look to Luck throwing Hilton. I mean, he's going to hit everybody. I mean, even yeah. Hakeem Nix will probably get I think, I think Luck. Yeah. I think Luck has a lot of great upside because the Colts running game is just bad. Oh, yeah. No yeah. one yeah. can't rely on Trent Richardson. Nope. And they'll be desperate for a win. And the good, the good thing is, is even though their their running game isn't as good, Ahmad Bradshaw could almost be coupled in there as a hot as well. Mm-hmm. Because Ahmad Bradshaw is clearly setting himself apart as that back that you need. The main and, but the good news is, is that he also can catch what Luck throws to him. So yeah. very often you'll see anything from Luck, even Luck breaking off on a nice little run for 10, 12 yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, you did quarterback, so I think I'm going to go with receiver for hot. Uh, Jordy Nelson, Packers, coming off that 209-yard game. Um, goes against Detroit this week, and Detroit, I mean, the Detroit. And when you have Aaron Rodgers, who I think we can all agree is probably the uh, an elite quarterback. So, so you I mean, no, 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 there's no question about it. He hasn't, he hasn't looked yeah. as good as Rodgers been known to be in the past, but Rodgers is one of those quarterbacks that you can't count on being down yeah. for very long. Yeah. A lot like Drew Brees, a lot like some of these quarterbacks who have had some rougher first weeks. Um, he has the option of Randall Cobb out there, and Randall Cobb is also going to be a great receiver this year. But between the two of them, they're going to get most of the catches. Oh, definitely. Big one. Well, yeah. and with, with Lacey, if he can run the ball, that opens up a lot for them in terms of over-the-top pass stuff. Uh, my hot for the week is Antonio Gates. I think when you put up the kind of numbers he did against the best defense, what is arguably the best defense in the league in Seahawks, Seahawks yeah. you know, you can be relied on to do that against any other defense. And I mean, three TDs especially. I'm, he didn't break 100 yards, but three TDs is more anytime, than enough for any any time a player is getting multiple TDs, he yeah. needs to find a way into your lineup yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. Yeah. It's great. Too. Even though he's 34. I yeah, that, that was, oh, yeah. was going to be my next point. His he's age, been durable. People have been questioning him because yeah. of his age, and then boom. He's yep. been durable, so, you know. And Philip Rivers has had his um, points where he's not necessarily been the most consistent quarterback, but he really seems to have come out the gates really strong this mm-hmm. year, and I think that that's only going to continue to connect with I him. I think uh, their, yeah. their coaches, uh, Mike uh, McCoy, so I, he's a great coach. So I think that I, it's because Philip Rivers had a rough, rough 2012, and then McCoy comes in 2013, changed it. Yeah, yep. turned it over. Yeah, I agree. I remember that 2012 season really well. <laughs> Same here. Um, Same so here. So now moving on to our matchup, which as people that live in the Midwest, we all got to pay attention to that Green Bay Detroit game, that first yep. uh, NFC North head-to-head real big matchup that's gotten everyone's eyes. I mean, Yeah, there's, there, there has to be a lot of juicy fantasy matchups. I mean, you got uh, Rodgers, Nelson, Lacey, and then on Detroit's side, I mean, Stafford, Megatron, Megatron. and then Reggie Bush. Like, the, yeah. the defenses themselves aren't that good. Yeah. And it's at Detroit, so you're on the field turf a lot faster. I think a high-scoring game and just going to be offensive. Well, I think that's the good thing. is It's in Detroit, so you can count on the Detroit players to be hot. Mm-hmm. And the Packers, the way that they've started uh, – they got to get something going quickly to kind of yeah. prove themselves a little different than the rest. I mean, last year they had Rodgers' injury kind of hindered them a little bit. Um, but this year, Rodgers isn't injured. They have no excuses. Well, they really need to kind of get going on the pass game especially. Mm-hmm. And last week you talked about getting off to a slow start. <clears throat> he, The team was out 18 nothing to the Jets at home. at home. So there's something to be said there for having your ego a little bit bruised and wanting to not have a repeat performance. I agree. I agree. Yep. Well, a lot, of, a lot of stuff to watch this week. Uh, fantasy sure. teams. <laughs> Mine personally, they need to be doing a little bit better. So I'm going to be banking on all of you guys' <laughs> waiver wire pickups. Um, be sure to check out our show next week and follow us on Twitter or tweet any questions you have about your lineup toward us. And be sure to tune in next week. Thank you.